What is a bear market? According to Investopedia, a bear market is one in which securities are trading down 20% um, from, from peak highs. Um, the U.S. stock market has pulled back big in recent weeks with the S&P 500 trading down more than 10% off its high set last month. The culprit here, a slew of geopolitical turmoil, including the below. Tariffs on imports of steel, aluminum, and other manufacturing materials. Hawkish comments from the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve promising to hike interest rates once more in this last year and three more times in 2019. Midterm elections bringing uncertainty to the uh, political power structure. Um, a rise in the U.S. dollar, which makes businesses overseas more expensive for U.S. companies. And then uh, there was another one here, too. The new home sales came in at 553,000 versus 625,000 expected. So basically what we're getting here is the market is simply pricing in the fact that it doesn't believe that 2019 growth is going to be anywhere near the growth that the market has seen over the past few years. And despite the negative headwinds, there's no actual evidence that the, these fears will come true. So looking at this S&P 500 map, we're seeing just a ton of blood here. There's red everywhere. All these securities are trading lower. Look at Amazon got crushed this week. Um, well, actually just on Friday. But um, despite these headwinds, the sales estimates for the first and second quarters for 2019 have actually increased. Um, they're projecting an average revenue growth of 8% and earnings growth in the ballpark of 10% for S&P 500 companies. Um, this is obviously down from the 20% that we saw this year, but those were mainly attributed to the one-time, well, the huge, massive jump related to the Trump tax cuts. So the thing about all this volatility, guys, is we have to remember that um, the number one indicator for a recession is a fall in earnings. And uh, you can look at whatever indicators you want, but if earnings and earnings forecasts still remain strong, the chances that the market correction turns into a bear market are unlikely. In addition, for this month, jobless claims came in at 215,000. Um, there were 202,000 for the month of September, so slightly higher, but still historically very low. 202,000 were the lowest since the 1960s. Um, the number of Americans receiving government benefits hit a 45 year low. And despite durable goods being expected to be down 1.5%, they were actually rose 0.8% for the month. Um, we have seen a company since, such as uh, Anheuser-Busch, PPG, Illinois Tool Works come out and say that they were impacted by the trade war. Southwest Airlines and American Airlines, they fell saying that increasing fuel costs ate into their third quarter profits. And uh, obviously Amazon and Google reported difficult or disappointing earnings, but Google's were mainly attributed to competition in advertising related to Amazon. Amazon was eating away at their profits. And Amazon beat on earnings and had a minor revenue miss of a half a million on $56.6 billion. So the big thing here was that their fourth quarter revenue guidance was lowered by $685 million, but still the analysts are very bullish on Amazon. And I think what's going on here is the market's just a bit jumpy. There's all this turmoil. Everyone knows that this has been a 10 year bull market and uh, they're questioning whether or not this is going to transpire into a bear market or if this is just a pullback. So um, all this being said, when will these next five years be as lucrative as the past five years? I don't think so. I don't think they will. And, um, Despite how strong the economy appears to be right now, the interest rates are rising. And we all know how rising interest rates eventually hit the economy. And the, the end result is it puts the economy back into a recession. Now, it doesn't have to be necessarily anything that we saw in 2007, but um, it could mean the market trades sideways for a little bit and people see little to no returns on their investment. Um, yeah, we're in year 10 of this bull market. And uh, although we've seen this acceleration due to government deregulation and significant tax cuts, um, I think the cycle will continue. Now, if you're looking at the uh, Warren Buffett indicator, 
which any of you can access at gurufocus.com. Um, this is a indicator that helps look at the valuations of stocks compared to the GDP. And you see that the GDP has been going steadily here, but look at the valuations of stocks. They're way ahead of where they need to be. Um, just saying, it's just another indicator that says we're expensive. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a correction, but uh, it, it just says, you know, look at, look at these historical cycles. About every eight years, guys, a bull market goes from, you know, go, we go from a bull market to a little bit of a recession. So um, just know what we're getting at here. Um, my strategy here. So am I selling everything? No, not at all. My strategy here is that I've I built up some cash prior to this because I've been watching this for a little bit of time. I didn't have a lot of cash on the sideline, but I had some cash on the sideline. And I've started to deploy some of that cash um, strategically. So I've been looking at the companies that really reported solid earnings. I like Visa. I like MasterCard, Microsoft, Adobe. They reported very solid earnings. Um, one that you guys might not know, Praxair. They're a great company. They're basically a monopoly uh, when it comes to the uh, gas industry. And um, Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks has been holding up well despite all these other companies being down. Checkpoint Softwares has been doing great. And then uh, consumer non-cyclical, uh, such as PepsiCo. Obviously, when people are fearful, they're going to flock to uh, PepsiCo, Procter & Gamble, those kind of stocks because in good economies, people are going to use, you know, people are going to eat in good economies. People are going to eat in bad economies. So people flock to things like PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, uh, Procter and Gamble. I just like PepsiCo because I think that they have the best management of the group. And um, if you're really looking to invest like a selective contrarian and buy something that not a lot of other, a lot of other people are buying right now, but it might be worth holding for the next five years, I like. Uh, I actually like dabbling with a little bit of Chinese stocks here. I like only two though: Alibaba and Tencent Holdings. I think these are two Chinese giants that are worth owning. Um, they're both into social media and Alibaba's got cloud computing and then uh, um, online retail. So very, very lucrative businesses. Um, don't deploy all your cash here, but start making some strategic acquisitions. And then please subscribe to our channel, check out our animated videos and visit our blog to see our investing newsletter. And we show our portfolio and write a monthly report on it. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys got a little value out of this video and uh, maybe it can kind of calm you down in a little bit of uncertainty that's going on here. So thanks for watching. Guys.